Hi friends! Welcome back to our channel. We are finally finished building and installing the storage boxes for our flatbed truck camper. Like most things, this took longer than we would have liked. And just when we started to make some real progress, I had to fly home unexpectedly to help take care of my mom who was having some health problems. I was gone for almost two weeks, and during that time, Greg didn't show me any pictures or video of the work he was doing. And when I came back, I was shocked. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We are finally going to get started building the custom storage boxes for our truck camper. Greg has welded together the frame and we are going to start assembling them and putting them on the truck. Greg welded together the frames using 3 quarter inch tubing and 1 and a quarter by 1 16th thick angle on the corners. Alright, so these are the frames for the back storage boxes that are going to run underneath the camper. Uh, they are welded up of steel, Greg welded them up and then we painted them with some rust prohibiting paint for whatever that is worth. We did not get them powder coated because we had access to free rust prohibiting paint in cans, so we used that instead. The box frames are attached to the flatbed in two different ways. First we used metal to metal self-tapping screws to attach them directly to the flatbed frame. Then we used stainless steel self-locking nuts and bolts to go through the PVC and plywood base. Next up was the large storage between the cab and the camper. This took a while to weld up just because of its size. On the driver's side, there will be a lot of storage. On the passenger side, there will be about half the storage and a space for our spare tire. It was light enough that we could lift it up with just the two of us and once we had it in place, it was bolted down in the same ways as the back storage boxes. At this point, we took a very short break to admire our hard work. Pretty strong. I think it's pretty strong. strong. We also stopped to have a little bit of fun. This is going to be very not graceful. <laughs> oh god, what if I get stuck? You're not gonna get stuck. Oh, oh geez. Okay. <laughs> oh god, you kind of have to like turn and then. Oh hi. Hey. What's up? Come here often. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. I think we can call this that I made it, right? Woo! Good job. Okay, I should probably explain. So when designing this build, we knew that we wanted to keep a emergency pass through from the camper to the truck. When we ended up with a single cab truck, the question became how we were gonna manage to do that. And we came up with this. I shouldn't really say we, Craig came up with it in the design. So this is basically right here where I am sitting is where our window is in the camper, our emergency escape window. This is basically a little crawl through area where we should be able to crawl through the back window of the truck. I know that some people think having this emergency crawl through is ridiculous or overkill, but for us, it's just a peace of mind that we weren't ready to let go of. So, you know, if we're ever in a situation where we're in the camper and something is happening outside that it isn't safe for us to get out of the camper and get into the truck, we can hopefully crawl through this get in the truck and take off. Next up, we began cutting the PVC to frame out the boxes. This wasn't as easy as it sounds because there was a lot of strange cuts and things that we had to work around, so it was actually pretty time consuming. It is like Petra's. Good morning, guys. Today is day two of building the enclosures for our boxes. Today we are building jigs to cut out our doors, which is probably the most stressful part of this project because in the past, cutting doors has not been our specialty. So we'll see.
We started with the back storage box on the passenger side, which would have two doors on it. Step one was to trace and cut out for the wheel well. We then had to test fit and cut some more and test fit again. We attached our jig, making sure it was square and used a router to start cutting out the doors. We took it outside to test fit and all was good. We then came back inside to make our next jig, which was a little more complicated. After cutting that out, we did what else? Test fit again. This is the point in the project where I had to fly home. So from here on out, Greg's on his own. This entire project will be trimmed out in aluminum. Greg started by marking and pre-drilling into the aluminum trim. He would then go on to use a rivet gun to install the trim into the PVC and the steel framing. Unfortunately, he didn't take any video of this, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it. And I'll show you how it turned out in the end. So today we're gonna be cutting our hinges. So this is a hinge two inch hinge that in stainless steel that will be used for the door on the back and front of the truck bed. So I just want to show you since this piano hinge is was cut and is not crimped, the pin actually can move uh, and be removed from the outside. So if you just basically push on it, you can basically make it slide out and basically remove the full hinge. So what I'm going to do is to make it secure, I'm going to basically melt the pin to the outside um, of the hinge, such a way that it's not going to be able to move. So I'm going to use a TIG weld basically to melt that pin. Also, you have to be careful so on this hinge since this end is tied to the top part and on the other side the end is uh, with the bottom part of the hinge uh, I will be able to do that only on one side and not both sides because if I do both sides then the pin will be tied to both top and bottom part and you won't be able to move the hinge Alright, now that I punch the location of the holes, I'm gonna do one pass, uh, basically pre-drill uh, each hole prior uh, making it the final size. So I'm gonna set up everything and I'll be back. Alright, so I set up the drill press and I am ready to drill. So now that I'm done drilling the pilot holes, I'm going to change the drill bit uh, to the uh, final size. So I'm going to set that up and again go through all those pilot holes. Alright, all the holes are made, so now we're just going to clean that back uh, very quick. So I'm going to take... Um, a cordless drill and a bigger drill bit just to clean up those holes. Next up we're installing the door handles. Greg made a jig that he used to trace and cut out the handles. And then he installed the hinges along the bottom. Working in the dark like he often did, Greg finished installing the doors just in time for me to arrive the next day. All right. So, you want to take off uh, the, the blindfold? Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> you did the doors! You said you didn't do the doors! Oh my god!
But um I knew you did so much more than you were letting on. I knew it. Oh my oh my god, you have all these doors done too? Holy crap. Oh my god. I am so I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew you were trying to make me think that you didn't get it done. Holy crap. Oh my god. I am so impressed. Oh my god. So that's it guys. We are finally done and we cannot wait to mount up this camper and get back on the road. Thank you so much for sticking around for what I know is a super long video. We hope you enjoyed it. If there's something that we forgot to cover and I'm sure that there is, please feel free to drop a question below and we'll make sure to answer all of them. Until next time guys. Bye.